There are many applications where we would like to explore spaces that are too small or dangerous for humans to enter. Inspecting a water pipeline, searching a collapsed building, conducting minimally invasive surgery, and exploring an underwater shipwreck are just some examples of applications where exploration of these spaces with a robot could improve human health, safety, and productivity. You might not think a soft robot made of fabric and air would be practical enough for this task, but this presentation is about the design of a field-ready soft robot system and its deployment in a space like these. My name is Margaret Code from Stanford University, and I'm presenting the paper entitled Fine Robots, Design, Teleoperation, and Deployment for Navigation and Exploration. Fine robots are a recently explored type of robot characterized by three attributes, tip extension, directional control, and significant length change. This type of movement can be achieved by various mechanisms, but here we focus on vine robots that grow via pressure-driven eversion, that is, turning inside out of their body material. These robots propel their tip forward without relative movement between their body and the environment, which makes them capable of navigating sticky and slippery terrain and confined spaces with ease. Various proof-of-concept designs have been developed for the use of these robots in navigation and exploration tasks. However, none of these systems has been deployed in the field. There's a need for a portable vine robot system that can be steered at long lengths and is teleoperated to allow adaptation to unknown environments. We created a new teleoperated vine robot for navigation and exploration. We deployed it at a soft robot navigation competition, and we also deployed it at an archaeological site in Chavin, Peru. First, I'll talk about our new vine robot system. Our vine robot grows from a compact base to an arbitrary length, is teleoperated using a custom designed flexible joystick, and carries a camera at its tip. Our hardware implementation has three main parts the growing portion, which extends into the environment being explored the base station, which contains the components required to control the growing portion, and the human interface, which allows the human operator to send commands to and receive information from the robot. First, I'll talk about the soft robot body. It's made of a long tube of material that's folded inside of itself. The material should be airtight, thin, and flexible, but not stretchable, so as to evert when internal air pressure is applied. We used two different soft robot body materials, clear LDPE plastic and black TPU coated ripstop nylon fabric. The clear plastic works well for quick prototyping and was used for the deployment of the robot at the soft robot navigation competition. The black fabric is much more durable and was necessary for the rugged environment of the archeological site. The ungrown portion of the robot body is stored on a spool inside the robot base. The spool is connected on one end to a bearing and on the other end via a shaft coupler to a motor with an encoder that allows control over the robot's growth speed. When the base is pressurized, the main tube of the soft robot body inflates and the motor allows controlled release of the body material. To steer the robot body, we developed a new soft actuator called series pouch motors, which are based on pouch motors and our previous work on series pneumatic artificial muscles. Series pouch motors allow steering of the robot body at long lengths and they're relatively easy to manufacture. To make a series pouch motor, you start with a tube of the same material as the main robot body and heat seal it at regular intervals. Gaps in the heat seals allow airflow along the actuator. When the actuator is pressurized, each pouch balloons up and shortens, creating a length change. To steer the vine robot, we attach three series pouch motors around its body. Based on our previous work on teleoperation of a simulated vine robot, we developed a custom-designed flexible joystick that mimics the shape of the vine robot body. An IMU at the joystick tip measures its curvature, which is mapped to the pressures in the three series pouch motors. Other inputs control the main body pressure, the desired motor direction, and the desired motor speed. An emergency stop switch cuts the power and air pressure to the robot if needed. Because we do not directly sense the robot's shape, we rely on visual feedback of the human operator to direct the robot tip to the desired position. 
For exploration of the archaeological site, we needed a camera mounted at the robot tip to provide visual feedback to the human operator and to record footage of the explored areas. To keep the camera at the robot tip, we used a rigid cap slightly larger than the robot body diameter. The cap gets pushed along by the robot tip as it extends. To allow operation in a wireless denied environment, we needed a wired connection to provide power to the camera and transmit the video signal to the human operator at the base. To protect the camera wires from snagging on the environment, we designed a zipper pocket that contains the wires and lengthens as the robot grows. The zipper head is attached to the rigid cap and zips up the zipper during growth. The wires are fed into the zipper pocket at the robot base. Finally, the base station contains a few other pieces to make the robot system function. A portable air compressor provides pressurized air to the system. Four closed loop pressure regulators control the pressure sent to the base and to the three series pouch motors. An Arduino and control circuitry facilitate the mapping of commands from the joystick to the pressure regulators and to the motor in the robot base. The entire system runs off a single power wire that can be plugged into an outlet. This ensures continued operation in the field, provided that a power source is available. Once we had built our new teleoperated Vine robot system, we were able to deploy it at a soft robot navigation competition. Seven robots from around the world participated in the RoboSoft 2018 soft robot navigation competition. The competition course was based on a mock disaster scenario and consisted of four obstacles, unstable cylinders, stairs, a square aperture of size chosen by each team, and a sand pit. Overall, the Vine robot was the only robot in the competition to navigate all obstacles perfectly on the first attempt. Since the Vine robot does not rely on ground reaction forces local to its tip to move straight, it navigated the sand pit with ease. Due to its hollow air-filled body and growth-based movement, the Vine robot was able to shrink its diameter through the smallest aperture overall and the smallest aperture relative to the robot body size in the competition. The continuum nature of the Vine robot body and the curvature of the actuators made rising up over the stairs trivial as well. Finally, due to its low center of gravity and gentle contact, the Vine robot was able to pass easily through the unstable cylinders without knocking them over. After successfully deploying our Vine robot system at the soft robot navigation competition, we were ready to deploy it at an archaeological site. The archaeological site at Chavin, Peru was a monumental center of religion and culture for the ancient Andean civilization that flourished there between 1200 and 500 BC. Today, archaeologists explore it to try to understand the people who built it. Several of its underground spaces are too small for a human to enter and too tortuous to explore with a camera on a stick, so we were invited to use our Vine robot to take video in three different locations. The first location was a curving tunnel with a rock blockage four meters in. The Vine robot successfully navigated the rock blockage. The second location was a tunnel with a 90 degree right turn two meters in. The Vine robot successfully navigated the turn and explored the tunnel. Finally, the third location was an angled shaft that turned completely vertical one meter in. The Vine robot successfully collected video in the entire shaft before reaching the end. In summary, we developed a new teleoperated Vine robot for navigation and exploration. We successfully deployed it at the Soft Robot Navigation Competition and at an archaeological site in Chavin, Peru. With this work, we brought our soft robot system outside the lab and explored a space like these. With continued research into practically useful robot designs, hopefully we will soon have robots capable of any desired exploration task so as to improve human health, safety, and productivity. I'd like to thank my co-authors on this work, as well as the many other people who helped make it possible. I'd also like to thank our funding sources. For more information on Vinerobot designs and related research, please visit vinerobots.org. Thank you.